Excellent customer service is very important. Customers want to feel that you respect them, that you are there for them. Just making sure the customer is satisfied. I like the fact that I can communicate personally, not just over the phone. At the end of the day, they know that they have that one person they can actually call on. You want to treat that person how you would want to be treated. We work seven days a week, 365 days of the year. I try to make every experience a wow experience for the customer. 5,000 people in the Bahamas affected by Hurricane Joaquin. This as Nemo officials insist they did their job. Efforts to restore essential services on impacted islands continue, plus Bahamians celebrate National Heroes Day. We've got those stories and a whole lot more tonight. I'm Bonnie Toot and NB12 starts now. Topping news tonight, the National Emergency Management Agency has revealed that 5,000 people were affected last week when Hurricane Joaquin battered the central and southern Bahamas. During a news conference at NEMA's headquarters this afternoon, officials once again defended their response to the dangerous storm, insisting NEMA did its job and officials wouldn't have done anything differently. On the ground from the emergency support function group, they are all professionals and they went out and they did all the assessments like they were mandated to do. As relief efforts continue on the family islands devastated by Hurricane Joaquin, NEMA officials remain in defense mode, once again defending the agency's response in the aftermath of the dangerous storm. During a news conference held to update the public on efforts to bring relief to 5,000 affected residents and to restore essential services on the impacted islands, NEMA's first assistant secretary, Crystal Glinton, felt compelled to respond to critics who claimed NEMA did not demonstrate a sense of urgency following the storm's passage. She insisted their team got the job done. Persons have mentioned that we didn't go out initially, but we could not. We had to ensure that the airports were safe for us to go out. We didn't wish to have our assessors. We had no fatalities, and then when we set up the assessors, then we would have a fatality. NEMA was also heavily criticized after scores of residents on the impacted island said they were caught off guard and would have fared better had they been adequately warned. Reporters asked Clinton if officials would have done anything differently. Her response drew a smattering of applause from her colleagues. No. I can honestly stand here and say no. In my opinion, I have a director. <laughs> you may have know them, but we speak as one body, all of us. All of us did our job, and that's why we deal with preparedness. We speak as one. We wouldn't have done anything any different. That's the reason we do the preparedness in advance. Prior to the storm, um, as many people remember, we had a workshop for the southern area, for the southern district earlier this year, for all island administrators and local government persons to come in. We deal with nothing but training in here year round. Since Hurricane Joaquin's passage, the first assistant secretary says NEMO officials have visited all of the impacted islands and the agency is currently in response mode. Though she could not say how many homes have been destroyed, Clinton said rapid assessments have revealed that thousands of people have been affected by the powerful storm. That 5,000 persons during a rapid assessment were affected. Those islands were San Salvador, Long Island, and Acklands, and Crooked Island in particular. Crooked Island is said to be the hardest hit island, with 65% of homes receiving major damage. Nearly 30 residents have been evacuated and living in temporary accommodations in New Providence. Provisions have also been made for children and teachers from that island to be transferred to New Providence schools. The Department of Social Services has set up a health desk on Thompson Boulevard and has provided accommodations for five of the 25 people who registered. 29 persons have been registered at the help desk so far, and of that 29, all of them have applied for assistance with emergency food. Um, and that is where they're giving, given a food coupon. Um, again, to 
The full coupon is one time at this point, but what if I need more? And so we have to say to them, come back if you need more, if you need the additional help. That is what we have to do to try to lessen the stress that they're experiencing. Officials say social workers dispatched to the affected islands have also distributed food, water and clothing to those in need. But not everyone has gotten the desperately needed assistance. And many of the islands, and especially some points in Long Island, because it's very difficult to get through Long Island. We got up as far as the berries in Long Island yesterday. We have not, we were not able to make it to Gordon. But in some pockets, you have people who are saying that they have not gotten food, they have not gotten water. Some persons' homes that we went into yesterday as well, they had quite a, 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 a supply of water and food, whereas in other homes, you didn't see very much. Application forms are now available for those impacted residents who lost items during the storm and would like to bring in certain goods duty-free. Glinton provided the list of approved islands. Extingency order has been issued, whereby persons who've been affected, they can bring in items duty-free, and it's for the islands of Acklands, Cat Island, Crooked Island, Exuma, Inagua, Long Key, Long Island, Mayaguana, Rum Key, Ragged Island, Samana Key, San Salvador, and those who've suffered hardship or loss as a result Parking Joaquin. Application forms are available online at Nemus Gladstone Road Headquarters and Department of Social Services. The so persons there will be able to fill out these forms where they can report items duty free, and that would be for building material, electrical and plumbing fixture and materials, household furniture, furnishing and appliances, and generators and motorized vehicles. Meantime, Assistant Director in the Department of Environmental Health Services, Andrew Thompson, says many animals died on the impacted islands, presenting possible health risks for residents. Basically, that is, that is in Long Island, but we, we had, I think, a, a few in San Salvador as well. Initially, uh, you know, temporary burning, and the plan is to burial with some lime to force decom uh, decomposition. The department has also commenced vector control treatments. 13 people have been sent to Long Island, 6 people to Crooked Island, 5 to Acklands, 2 to Rum Key, and 4 people to San Salvador. Right at this moment, there would be significant pest mosquitoes coming off of the waters because it is uh, salt water uh, mixed with a little fresh water. So you're going to have, um, as the water uh, recedes, you're going to have uh, a lot of breeding. The concern would be much less with respect to um, chikungunya or dengue uh, because of the type of water. However, once you begin to get uh, rain and you have thousands of containers, then that the concern is there. Thompson says officials also sent additional fogging equipment. Meantime, steps are also being taken to restore essential services on those islands. Deputy General Manager of the Water and Sewerage Corporation, Robert Deal, says while water is now being supplied to San Salvador, Long Key, Mayaguana, and parts of Long Island and Acklands, power supply issues on Crooked Island have prompted officials there to take other measures. Because of the amount of damage or devastation that has occurred in Crooked Island, we know it's going to be quite a while before power supply is restored to its proper, uh, the proper power supply is restored. And so what we are doing is we're reviewing options at this moment to rapidly deploy uh, desalination plants both to Colonel Hill and also the Landrill Point. And also we're going to be working to deploy a water tanker truck to assess in tankering what desalinated water that's produced to those communities who do not have piped water because we know the urgent need for high quality portable water in Crooked Island at this time. Over in lovely Bay Ackland, damage to the causeway resulted in one mile of the corporation's water main being washed away. We are reviewing uh, how best we can supply the community of lovely Bay in the interim while a determination is made as to how best that and how fast that causeway will be restored. Meantime, property manager at the Bahamas Telecommunications Company, Brian Jacques, says 38% of BTC cellular customers are still without service. Basically, a week ago, we had a failure of approximately 59 cell sites. That's negatively impacting 59 communities within the central and southern Bahamas. Today, a week later, BTC can report 
approximately 37 sites or 60 percent of those cell sites have been restored. The president of the Bahamas Insurance Association says owners have started filing claims after losing their homes, vehicles and boats. Simone Davis reports. Hundreds of residents in Ackland, San Salvador, Long Island, Crooked Island and Rum Key lost their most prized possessions after Hurricane Joaquin battered the southern Bahamas. Residents claim they lost their homes, cars, boats, clothing and even food during the dangerous storm with no idea of how they would recover and some with no insurance. The BIA president said companies in the industry are aware that it would take millions of dollars to accommodate their customers and they are prepared to handle it. However, he said a major concern is that many people living in the southern Bahamas don't have insurance at all. It's going to be several million dollars, no doubt about it. Uh, but as the exact amount, it's still early days, and we'll find out as, as, it, as, the weeks, as the days and weeks go by. But we committed as an industry to make sure that claims are adjudicated in a timely manner so we can bring relief to our brothers and sisters in the southeastern and central Bahamas. As for those residents on their southern islands without insurance, Komalafe said it will be hard to get back on their feet. The reality, though, is that in the Bahamas, when you look at the ins insurance penetration in terms of insurance risk, that, I, that we have, the more you go to the south, moving away from New Providence, Abaco, and uh, Grand Bahama, you have l less insured risk. And you know that's not unexpected because New Providence is the capital and the second city is Grand Bahama and Abaco. So uh, we don't have as, as much and that's why you know, it's, uh, we, had, we were lucky in, in terms of New Providence and Grand Bahama not being hit and we thank God for that. Uh, but the level of market penetration from an insurance perspective is lower when you go further down south. He also said after seeing the level of devastation on some islands, most people would need insurance companies to assist them in house repairs. He noted that the only challenges companies are facing is accessibility to some of the islands. So this is still early days um, when it comes to the hurricane working. Uh, members, we've been in touch with our members, uh, members of the Bahamas Insurance Association to kind of estimate the potential exposure. But there's been, there's been some challenges when it comes to logistics uh, in terms of accessibility as well to some of the settlements on the islands. But we're working around the clock. Um, I spoke to one of our members earlier today, one of the adjusters, who has a station right in Selamaris on Long Island. But we expect that it's going to be in the millions. Um, so some claims have started coming in already. Komalafe said the main thing that the insurance industry is focused on now is expediting the process of handling claims. One thing we committed to doing as an industry is to make sure that as soon as the claims come in, we expedite the process because we want to bring relief to persons. That's the reason why people buy insurance. So at moments like this, we're able to actually assist them and provide them with the protection they bought, which is financial protection. So we're going to be expediting the process. We will be expediting the process in the coming days. Uh, but like I indicated, a lot of claims are already coming in. Um, it's not as fast because of difficulties I mentioned earlier. He also urged those with no insurance to get insured as soon as possible. Reporting for NB12, I'm Simone Davis. Two days after a man was murdered on Potter's Key, the bloodshed continued on this National Heroes Day. Police say a man was shot and killed on Dorset Street in eastern New Providence. Head of the Central Detective Unit, Chief Superintendent Paul Rowe provided these details on the scene. Uh, shortly before 2 p.m., uh, what we understand is that two males, one age 22 and the other uh, 23, were sitting on some buckets here on the side of the street in uh, Dorset Street. A person's pulled up in a burgundy or maroon colored uh, Honda and uh, called one of the young men as he got up and walked towards the vehicle. Occupants produced a firearm and began discharging shots in his direction. The country's murder count now stands at 119. The individual ran and the assailant exited the vehicle, pursued him, uh, discharging multiple shots again at him. Uh, EMS arrived on the scene shortly after that incident and pronounced this male lifeless. The at this early stage, we do not have a motive for this particular homicide this afternoon, but we appeal to persons who would have any information to provide that information to us. 